All right, how's it going, everyone? This is D with FT Nerd Talk. We got a special guest today. Uh, if you guys have seen her cosplay around on Instagram or TikTok, it's uh, Jenna from Jenna Say What. How's it going, Jenna? Hey, I'm great. How are you? I'm not too bad. Trying to trek on through this uh, COVID being at home quarantine type thing, but the other than that, not terrible. That is true. This COVID thing, this us being stuck inside, not being able to leave, and it really stinks. It puts a damper on the day. Yeah, it takes, it takes its toll after a while, for sure. <clears throat> you, uh, you're a pretty veteran cosplayer, and you told me before that you also make uh, costumes for people, too. Like, uh, how long have you been doing that all together? Um, honestly, and people get really surprised whenever I say this, but I've only been doing it for five years. Um, this November will be year six. You want to celebrate with that, or just going to be like the same old, same old? Do what? Are you going to celebrate for this? Uh, this um, year? Last year, I really wanted to celebrate um, because my first convention, my my official year marker is um, Bull City Comic Con in Durham, North Carolina. And unfortunately, um, I was out of town that same weekend, so I didn't get to celebrate, which really stinks. And then I was like, that's fine. I'll just go next year. Well, let's just say I, I highly doubt my year marker will happen at year six. But um, I am planning on doing like some sort of way to kind of like celebrate that, whether that be like um, bringing people in to celebrate um, or doing something on my own just me being me, like maybe just getting like a new sewing machine, something like that. But I think that it's since I didn't have that five year mark um, celebration, I I have to do something. I get that completely. Like you just you have to do something just to make yourself feel better. Uh, you've been uh, doing a lot of different cosplays throughout, like from Star Trek to very uh, Harley, true Harley Quinn and. <laughs> A lot of other mishup mashups of things that you've also created. Like, uh, I see that you are on talk TikTok and you do, you focus a lot on one character every so often. You move on to the next one. Is there any favorite one that you've done so far that coincides with TikTok that you like a lot? Yes, um, I'm gonna straight. Uh, I'll I'll say the fan favorite of that one because my fan favorite for my TikToks is um, Jones, my cult OC. Um, so, yeah, she's kind of become my favorite. Um, I put the most energy and effort into her. Um, although I do have a couple of um, new characters that are going to be brought into the fold. Um, and the way that I say it is it's like all of my TikTok um, original characters are all, um, they all know Jones. They're all in that same realm as Jones. Okay. Um, they all kind of like live together, so to speak. Um, so Jones would definitely be my, my absolute favorite OC. And, um, one of the characters I am going to bring in soon. Um, and I've been working on her diligently. Um, OC, but, that's original cosplay, I'm assuming. Yes. I've never heard of this Russian before. All right. Yeah. Original character, original costume. Um, but yeah, she, um, the newest one, um, I'll go ahead and spoil it because I might have it out by the time that this happens, but, um, I am working on a, um, what do you call it? A nurse, uh, a clown nurse OC, and she's going to be a lot more spooky. So the next two characters are going to be a lot more in that spooky, creepy realm. Okay. Um, but if you, um, with the clown nurse OC, my biggest, like, you better be watching that background though. Like you're going to have to watch those videos a little close because there's actual hints at Jones's backstory and her, um, how she became the character that she is aside from her backstory that I've already posted. So you put a lot more detail into the stories that you're telling on TikTok is what you're saying. Exactly. Is that is that like a normal thing that a lot of people do, or the, like you are you one of the first people to see yourself do something like that? Um, I see it with a lot of um, a lot of the haunt actors. So like um, 
your your people that do like the scaring at like haunted houses and things like that they tend to already have characters that they've um kind of manifested into reality through the haunt scene gotcha. um so they already have like a very solid backstory for these characters and things like that um so i'm definitely not the first but um i think i'm the first in like my my cosplay circle out here and a lot of friends of mine are like oh my gosh i didn't think that i could create an original character and i'm like heck yes you can and so quite a few of my friends have i've watched them create their own characters through talking to me and being like well how did you do this and i'm like you just kind of you find that piece of them that's in you and you just kind of give them the microphone and then just let them take over so pretty much acting is what you're saying. You just find that character and you just push that character out of you through yep. that character. That's cool. Yep. Uh, you uh you hit up a lot of when I type in your name on Google, the first like convention that pops up for is a C2E2. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you've been to a lot of different conventions in your time, like for the six years you've been doing this. Is there any like any conventions that uh that stands out to you the most? I, I know like you can't go to them right now, but are there any good memories that you've had in the past? Yeah. Yeah, um, so the first convention that I did, um, my It's Not Your Fault panel, which I've kind of put it on a little bit of a hiatus because um, it is hard to get other people to go on their pa on this panel in particular to, um, to talk. So it's kind of, I kind of put it on a hiatus, but um, the first time that I brought out It's Not Your Fault, which is a panel about overcoming abuse and bullying through cosplay. And um, the first place that I did it was at C2E2. And honestly, it was, I, I'm originally from Illinois. So going, um, going from North Carolina to go back home and seeing people and meeting, especially meeting cosplayers that are from my home city that I didn't know before because like I wasn't into cosplay when I were, I was living in Illinois. So I always have super fond memories of C2E2 and, and going to that convention in particular, because I, I've made so many close friends um, through that circuit. Yeah. And then um, Dragon Con is always a, a favorite of mine. Um, I hate missing this year. Um, obviously they canceled. Almost everybody is canceled at this yeah. point, but yeah. um, Dragon Con is such a great favorite of mine because I've met so many incredible people through this, through this convention scene. I mean, realistically I've met so many great fun people throughout all of the cons, but like the out of state ones are like, um, I always call Dragon Con like your summer camp for nerds. I can see that. I can see that. So you're going to Dragon Con every year and it feels like you're going to summer camp. Everybody's there, there's crafts, there's activities, people are, you know, partying and you meet these incredible individuals and you connect and then like throughout the year you'll talk here and there and then as it gets closer to Dragon Con you guys start, you know, coordinating things a little bit more. So like you'll um I have a, uh, a Team Zisu group that does uh, Dragon Con every year. And it, the first year, it started off as an accident because of um, we went to the aquarium. I made a, um, if you have not seen Life Aquatic, highly recommend. It's an amazing movie. Um, it's a slow burn kind of movie, it but it's really good. It is. Like, it's both of those things. It's a slow burn, and it is a good movie. It's a lot about death and understanding of who you are and interacting with new people. It's a... Uh, it's, yep. it's a different kind of movie. It is. But, um, yeah, so the first year I, I went as Harley Zisu, <laughs> and I was like, nobody's going to get this. This this costume's going to be a complete flop. Surprise you were. <laughs> yeah, and so all of a sudden I started seeing all these Team Zisu people at the aquarium, and I was like, oh, my God, I want to get a picture with everybody. So they at one point someone was like, hey, why don't you get us together for, like, a group photo? And I was like, oh, my God, yeah, this is perfect. So I ran, grabbed everybody. We took a big group photo. And then they were like, why don't you make a group on Facebook for us? And I was like, oh, my God, this is happening. Okay. So I, 
I made a, a Team Zisu group and it is, it's grown every year and we keep getting new, member, new members and um, last year we had an absolute blast. Like um, we originally were only doing it at the aquarium, but we've pulled it to where um, we will start doing shoots at the um, Hilton, one of the, one of the hotels. Okay. Um, that's it. Um, over at the Sheridan pool. Cause they have the nice, super nice pool. But um, so we're doing that now and it's kind of grown to the point where they're like, can we get into the, the um, parade? And I was like, Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> are, you, are you on the list? <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, I can might, I might be able to get us in the parade, but I'm not going to be the only Team Zisu person walking because if I buy us a banner and set all of that up, and, and I'm the only out. one walking, Ooh. guys, come on. <laughs> that wouldn't be good, no. <laughs> no. So, like, those two are, like, big out-of-state cons that are, I just absolutely adore, along with KatsuCon. It's really so hard. It's so hard to pick, like, between them. But, like, out of the out-of-state ones, I always say C2E2, Dragon, and KatsuCon are my three main ones. Um, as far as local goes, I always love Ultimate Comics. Um, they put on um, Oak City and Bull City, and they've always been such a good home for me. So well, it's mostly environment free when it comes to good good Comic Cons or good conventions. Yep. Period. Gotcha. Yep. And I mean Galaxy Con is also a really good one because it's so large and you have all these, you know, celebrities and stuff and people that you wouldn't normally see and it's just I mean, as long as you have good people around you, a con a con can suck itself, but you can make it fun, really. <laughs> That's sweet. That's nice to hear. Um, we're going to take a little break from talking about uh, you in particular and talk about some nerdy news that's out there. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you heard about the Umbrella Academy has the, secret, the second season trailer. Have you watched it yet? I do not. And it, this sounds really strange, but there's a reason for it. I try to avoid um, any trailers as much as possible because I always get them spoiled for me in the trailers so I didn't watch it I started to watch it and I stopped myself and I was like no 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 no. let all of this be a surprise to you <laughs> because I love the Umbrella Academy so much it's a really good show yeah it's so good like really good show. oh god like Klaus is just absolutely he's he's an angel and I love him I loved I'm, him I'm in Misfit act, yeah I'm glad the actor bounced back from Misfit because uh after the show like kind of fizzled down it didn't mm -hmm. his his uh his career didn't really bounce back as much as you thought it would and i'm glad yep. he, like he found a new home on the umbrella academy like this is i am so happy about that and i thought about um cosplaying um a nathan klaus like version <laughs> and no one will get it but i am going to get a picture with him like yeah. as that I, I love and uh, I love gender bending. I love it so much, and like I would love to see that cosplay. Like, if you ever do, pro, I'm all for it. I'm here for it. Like I just I came up with the idea after watching Misfits, because um, <laughs> I actually watched Misfits after Umbrella Academy. But like, God, oh, the wow. way that you did it backwards. Umbrella. Yeah. Oh my goodness! So you have like a, a deep appreciation for the actor, then, huh? I do. Yeah. And I mean, Umbrella Academy, like they left us off. So they, they left us hanging yeah. and I'm just like, I just want it to be such a surprise for me. And I'm just so ready. I just, I'm, I'm so excited. I know that there's going to be new, um, new characters with powers. Right. And I'm just really stoked to see it. I'm just, I'm like over the moon that it's still, ha that's happening in quarantine because realistically how much new stuff have we seen recently <laughs> not much we're mostly just recycling old stuff so no i get it completely yep <laughs> uh, that's uh, that, I, I do have some more news but did you have any type of nerdy news you want to talk about um actually the um did you hear about dc they're um they're pulling their streaming service already the uh, dc universe no i did not yeah hear that. I have it. I'm so sad fun. about that, but they're they're apparently moving over to HBO Max. Of course they are. Why wouldn't? Um, they? which honestly I'm okay because like, for me I was like 
either I'll get HBO Max or I'll get DC Universe. And now if DC mo moves over there, then I'm like, okay, I'll get HBO Max because I absolutely have to continue um, watching Stargirl. It's which cute. Is, it's so good. Yeah, it's cute. Like, uh, I was apprehensive at first, but then my kids really wanted to watch it. And I watched it like, this is, uh, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And it's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It's a really good show. Was. And it's just, um, it's so cast? Yeah. It's such a good show. Like, it really just flows, and I love it. Uh, anything else you watch? Are you watching Doom Patrol also? I still have yet to watch Doom Patrol. I'm oh trying to catch up on um, Titans, because I heard so many bad things about Titans, and I was like, no, 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 no. I have, to, I have to watch this. I have to see it. So I I restarted it because I started it and wasn't really paying attention. And like going back and rewatching um, the first season, it was just like, man, this show has such a bad rap, but it's <laughs> so good. Like I get that people want like the exact comic book yeah, replica. That's but what it realistically, was. Yeah, but realistically it's like, why why do that? Why literally take the pages of a comic book and just literally say, okay, we're not going to go on a script. We're going to do it from the comic book. Like, it's kind of boring. You already know the story. Yep. And like, you had a TV show also that did like the very same thing. So like, why would like the, the early 2000 TV show that did that yep. very thing. And like, why would you want that, that to be done like again for a third time? Why don't you just want something a little bit different? And that's what this show gives you. It gives you, Something different. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it gives you different elements with the characters. It gives you uh, a different feel for everything. It modernizes it a bit and kind of makes it like a Marvel-ish by making it a bit real, like like type situations. It's it's yeah. really interesting. And really well done. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I I feel like a lot of um a, there's a lot of people that that have very open mouths about the subjects where they're just like, well, it, it's not like the comic books. And you have a, a lot of the real fans that are like, but I don't want it exactly like the comics because then I've already read the comic. Mm -hmm. Like I've already seen it in the comic book form. Like it's not necessary for me to have to have it identical to the book. So like anybody that listens to this, definitely please <laughs> go watch that show. It's so good. Like, of course the characters are going to be different. You can't make them identical. That was the same thing with like whenever the new Star Trek movies came out. Right. And like everybody lost their minds because, you know. It's too rock and roll. It's too extreme. It's, it's very. There, it, 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 like um, Kirk's parent, uh, like dad isn't dead in the series. And I'm right. like, hello, I am a Trekkie from birth. <laughs> like legit. My, both my parents like genetically, I they made a Trekkie. Like my mom, oh, my dad are mom, both yeah, huge Trekkies. Right on. Yeah, so it's like whenever I watch the movie, I was like, I didn't even care about the little bits that people complained about. All I cared about was sitting in a theater, watching the Enterprise on the big screen, and just crying. My, my big, <laughs> yeah, when uh, you saw his parents die, it kind of hit you hard. I agree with that completely. It, it mm -hmm. took the wind out of me. Like, I won't deny that because, like, I didn't think his parents were going to die when they actually did. And then, like, you saw a thing that happened with Spock and his mom. And, like, it just oh, it was, it was a roller coaster of emotions. I agree with you. It was. And that's the thing is, like, I knew that this this was a different, like, idea of Trek. It wasn't identical. I didn't want to see identical. I wanted to see something different. So like the people that the haters that are just like, oh, it has to be exactly like this. It's like, wow, that's really boring. You must live in a very boring <laughs> world. Like And the really cool part is like it uh it still held true, at least I think so, to the, the Gene Rottenberry mythos that he created. Like it still held oh, true it was. to that that I ideology that he uh made for that universe. And it, it, it was done well. It was done like really well. Like the the sequels, not so much. Like, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't care for those stories so much, but like that's kind of what you get when you jump into Star Trek. Not all of them are gonna yep. be gems. So yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Um I I have some more news here for you. Um 
the Bill and Ted trailer just dropped also. I'm like, I thought, I, if I had known you didn't care for trailers, I'd definitely would have brought this up. No, 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 that's totally fine because, like, um, like I can still talk on it because the Bill and Ted one I'm probably going to watch. Gotcha. Um, I am, I'm super, I'm a huge fan of Bill and Ted. My husband and I both um, cosplay Bill and Ted. And we're going to pull those back out. That's cool. Because I have to see it as Bill. Um, but yeah, Bill and Ted, they like the whole idea behind them and their whole philosophy on life is something that we desperately need right now. So the fact that we're having this new movie come out at this moment in time is so perfect just learned this word uh himbo these two guys are definitely full-on stoic himbos hardcore i have no idea what himbo is it's like a it's like a, a him bimbo oh yep yeah yep that's what these guys are but, they're just righteous dudes. they are they're your usual like early you know they're your 80s early 90s like you know like california laid back kind of dudes <laughs> and i love it like that's their whole their whole mantra is just incredible it's like the the whole you know be good to one another kind of thing like something that we really need like yeah. as our mantras right now and like i'm, I'm ready to see what their kids are gonna be like because they're very down with oppression like everyone yep. should just be cool with each other like uh let's just let's just try to be harmonious and make some cool music man yeah be most excellent to each other. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, I'm so pumped for this. I am. I'm really excited about it. And I aren't they releasing it just directly to a streaming service? Uh, that I wasn't sure of. Like I, I wasn't sure if they're going to wait for it to come out uh, in theaters, which is probably going to be impossible. But you could be right that it will be dropped digitally. At least that. Yeah. I'm, I'm all for that. Whatever whatever amount they want, I'm gonna spend it because I <laughs> I absolutely love those two and like I just I absolutely I was a huge Bill and Ted fan back in the day and now it, it like now I get to see another one I'm like yes please it is they're gonna be dropped on demand September first yep hey and I'm right about something <laughs> on demand and select theater so you're absolutely correct yay <laughs> did you have anything else you want to talk about third wise um, well, I mean, we did talk about the Umbrella Academy, and I was that was one of my things on the list Ooh. of, like, I'm so pumped. They didn't even watch a trailer, but you just sat excited about it. That's cool. Oh, I'm I'm beyond stoked about it, because, like, <laughs> once I really in a, am obsessed with a show, which um, Umbrella Academy is one of those shows. You just want to get into it. I just, I obsess over it, and I'm just, like, I want everything it like under the sun, which I mean, obviously you can't tell that with like the hundreds of Harley Quinn cosplays that I pump out. <laughs> of my hair, so, so. I don't know the fact you that have like a lot. I have my a lot. hair. <laughs> yeah, it's that obsession. It's a it once it clicks, it's like well, I guess I that small amount of free time I had is completely out the window. <laughs> right away. That's cool, uh, but they do have the Star Wars. Um, Emmy nominations out there. They got 16 Emmy nominations. I think uh, the less Watchmen. Than. Yep. It, it's much less than the Watchmen. I think they have about 26 nominations. Mm -hmm. and I think, yeah, I knew uh, it was double digits, and I was just like, oh, my God. Yeah, like, it's nuts. They're killing it. Like, yeah. um, I can't wait for, like, whenever we can finally get a Mandalorian 2, and that's going to be – there goes all my my free time as well. <laughs> That's where I was just where I was going to. Like, uh, is are you excited for the new Mandalorian series, a new season? Of I'm, I'm beyond stoked. Um, even like had planned out a new cosplay oh, to go with the Mandalorian, because at some point I just said Mandalorian and Andorian, and then I just started laughing, and I was like, "That's what I want to do." <laughs> <laughs> let's let's see it happen. I can't wait. <laughs> So I'm probably I'm I know I'm gonna make because I have a few of the patterns already, but um, I'm definitely gonna make an Andorian Mandalorian, and I just keep calling it an Ando Mando because that's just it's a tongue twister. 
Uh, but they always wear helmets. Are you like, are you just going to have the Andorian not wear the helmet this time? Or like, a, have like one of the antennas sticking out? How's that going to work? The antennas are sticking out of the okay. top. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Yeah. That's cool. I dig it. I re- much They're going to be like, what, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> just a blue antenna just sticking out. That's hilarious. And all the truck people are going to be like, how dare you? Uh, pretty and I'm much. Like, oh. <laughs> Well, they're going to be real pissed about my uh, my Harley because um, I don't know if you know this, but I have a Twilight Harley that I had special, um, specially made, and it's the um, pink and blue Leku, but it's split down the middle. Right. Uh, yep. She has like the, the her her I guess her hair horns that fold over her. Yep. Yeah, yep. they're just different colors. Well, mine are just, yeah, mine are just pink and blue. Um, I decide <laughs> not to go the dip dye route because I was like, I kind of want it to come down my face, and I thought the transition would look better with it, it coming Harley. down my face. It's more Harley. So, that way. yeah. Yep. Um, but I have a pattern in the fabric to make a, um, a Harley Quinn Starfleet uniform to wear with my, um, my Twilight, my Harley Twilight. So, kind of mashing up three things. All cylinders. I love it. Yep. I was like, if I can mash up Star Wars and Star Trek, I'm going to do it because, like, (laughs) it upsets so many people. But at the the same time, I'm like, why do I pull? (laughs) I don't understand this. Why not enjoy both for what they are? Because you can't can't compare and contrast, contrast the two. Like, Star Wars is about good versus evil, whereas, like, Star Trek is all about, like, the problems that we're facing in reality mirrored in the Starfleet universe. Yeah. Like, you can't compare those two. That's not comparable. So The way I always say it is, uh, Star Wars are the planets that you see that Star Trek never visit. That's what, that's what it is. It's, oh, that, I it's like that, that it's that quadrant of space that uh that Star Trek has already explored, but they don't they don't waste their time getting involved in it. That's what that's what those two are. So Yeah, I they're mean, like that prime directive though. Um <laughs> Palpatine's kind of a dick. You know what? We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go over here. That's why we'll you let don't the deal with them. Yeah, there you go. Let the board take care of it. They can't handle those guys anyway. Star Star Wars cannot handle the board. I don't care what anyone says. Nope, I I agree with that. They would be it, it would it would be a nightmare for them. They okay. wouldn't know how to handle it. They they wouldn't have like the first way. Even Jedi would have a hard time with the force. So yeah. Oh yeah, and the second that they picked up like a couple of Jedi, dude, they're we're done. That's it. Then like the Jedi got the same power as the Borg. So like yeah, there you go. You're done. You're done. So yep. You're screwed at that point. <laughs> well, this has been fun. Uh, I thought I'll, yeah. I'll ask you a lot more questions, but we got into like the whole nerdy thing, and like that was just so much fun. I enjoyed having you on. Is there anything like that people should be looking out for you coming this uh, this fall? Um, well, for one, thank you so much for having me on because this has been a absolute blast. <laughs> um, uh, as far as like finding me, um, if you you know, can only Google search one thing at a time or like put in something one at a time. Um, my website, www.genesaywhat.com. It has all the links to my, um, social medias on there. Um, everything else, um, especially Twitter and TikTok, where most of my content is posted. That's both of those are at under, uh, at Jenna underscore say underscore what. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not that complicated. It just sounds complicated. Because of how she it does. sounds complicated. That's why I'm always like, if you remember anything, genesaywhat.com. Boom. You'll you'll be able to get to those. Um, I will say, like, you do have, like, some video shorts, too, which are just hilarious. And, like, uh, I do. I, yeah. I, 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 think I, I encourage good. people to check those out. Yep. Those are on my YouTube page. Um, and links to that are also um, easily found on my um, website because I have all the the links to that kind of stuff. But yeah, my my YouTube has been <laughs> slowly dying. But I mean, maybe one day I'll go back. It's just that whew, that's a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. It's like talk about like creativity. You got to put a lot of creativity into your stuff on on uh, on YouTube. So I know I hear you. Yep. All right, well, this has been D with FPL Nerd Talk. You can check out Jenna, Jenna Say What, on all platforms. Just uh, make sure those underscores are there. And 
You guys have a good one. Thank you so much, Jenna. Yeah, thank you. Take care, guys.